good to be in the presence of God. Come on, just lift your hands and give him praise. Just lift his name and I. He is good. Yes.
good and God is good all the time and that is why we lift our voices every Sunday to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who laid down his life for you and I that is why we rejoice he is a good God now listen to what Psalm 103 tells us bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord all my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles here the psalmist is reminding us never to forget what the Lord has done for us God has been so good he has healed you he has provided for you he is with you we have a reason to rejoice come on somebody with the clap offering let's rejoice and praise Jesus in this place let's rejoice let's rejoice and I know every time we gather to worship the Lord together his presence comes down and wherever the Lord is the Bible says there is freedom and right now I want to take a minute and pray for you let me pray for you right now father thank you so much because you love us so much you demonstrated this when you sent your son here on earth who died a death that we deserved and because of that we can be assured that every promise in your word is a yes and we want to say amen to those promises right now father i'm praying in the name of jesus that would you heal the sick amid us would you provide for those who are in need of finances would you restore broken relationships god because that's who you are may you bring liberty and freedom to those who are captive to fear or whatever it is may they experience that peace that surpasses all understanding because when we bring our worries to you you promise to give us peace to guard our hearts and minds and so father i want to say thank you so much for answering all our prayers in the most revered and most wonderful name jesus and every person said a big amen <laughs> Woo. i love the fact that all around the world on this day on a sunday all christians stop and celebrate the most wonderful name jesus jesus is worthy of all our worship and all our praise now wherever you are you can be seated I know you could be in your room or wherever you are be seated and I know there's going to be a powerful word that's going to be preached by my friend a little bit later but I want to say thank you so much for being a part of our church online and church on TV it's always good to know that you are there you are being blessed we hear many stories about how you are being blessed wherever you are but I also want to remind you that we began our in-person gatherings two weeks ago and life is happening in all our campuses except for Kansanga and Bueyo Gerere. Now, my friends from Kansanga and Bueyos, I want to let you know that we are working on a solution for a place where you can gather so you too can enjoy coming together and lifting up the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, you can go to any of the other locations by reserving a free seat and invite a friend. By the way, there's lots of space available for all of you. Come, let's celebrate Jesus together. I also want to remind you that our equip streams are beginning. We want to teach you, equip you, so that you know how to do the work of the Lord. Um, register on whatsoverchurch.com. There's lots of information right there. Get there so that we can serve you wherever you are. Ah, now, are you ready for God's Word? I am ready. Now, last week was amazing. Pastor Brian Abajo from Wajero Church downtown preached an amazing message that God's Word is supreme because it is inspired by God. And today, my brother from Wajero Church, Bueyos, 
Ken Kanzaire is going to open the Bible and preach a second sermon. Now get your Bibles, get your notebooks, get your pens, and now put your hands together and welcome with me Pastor Ken from Otero Church, Buenos. Thank you very much, Pastor Eddie, and it is an honor to be sharing the Word of God with us today. Well, we've begun a series uh, last week, and the series is titled The Supremacy of God's Word. Now, goal in this series or through this series is to achieve three things. The first thing is that you and I will fall in love with God's Word, and the second thing is that you and I will understand four unique factors that make God's Word supreme, but also that you and I will commit to living your life according to God's word. I want us to pray before we get into today's message together. Father, we thank you. We honor you because you know each one of us intimately, each one of us. God, you are aware of where we are on our journey with you. I ask God that you customize your word, that it will reach each one of us. Speak to us. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, last week, Pastor Brian began this series uh, emphasizing to us why the word of God is supreme. What makes the word of God supreme? And he said that the word of God is supreme because it was God breathed. God's word is supreme because it was authored by God. It is also supreme because he guided the coming together of this word. He was put together by his guidance or through his guidance. God's word is also supreme because it is self-attesting. It has been proven over time to be true and faithful. We ended last week's message with an encouragement from Pastor Brian that because God's word is supreme, all of us can build our lives on it and we will surely succeed. Well, today we want to look at another unique factor that makes the word of God supreme, and that is that the word of God is sufficient. Now, one of the most important teachings on the Word of God and its supremacy that we see through the Bible is that God's Word is sufficient. This teaching, echoed throughout the Old and the New Testament, is one of the major reasons why the Word of God is truly supreme of overall. The sufficiency of God's Word can be simply defined this way, that in the Bible alone, God has given humanity all things that are necessary for the proper understanding of who he is, who we are, and how he has acted in the past, and what he expects of us. In fact, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, in the message, it says this, it says, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately, the one who invited us to God. And so the basic idea behind the sufficiency of Scripture is that nothing else needs to be revealed to humanity about God or His plan for the human race. The Bible is the record of all the things that God thought humanity needed to know about Him. In other words, Scripture my friends, is complete and enough for belief, but also for behavior. Nothing needs to be added to it. And yet, today, we see that the world out there that we live in is asking questions. Questions like, is the word of God still relevant? Is it competent enough to speak into matters pertaining the 21st century? Is it competent enough to speak into issues of globalism, challenges that we are facing in the business world, investments, industry, social media, the virtual life that we live in? Is the word of God competent? 
but also for us as believers, as Christians, some of us have lost our faith in God's Word. We don't believe that the Word of God is enough. And so in certain areas of our lives, we run to other sources to give us confidence, to give us hope, to give us strength in times of challenges. However, I believe that the Word of God is sufficient and relevant to address the current challenges that we face, that you and I face in our world today. True, God's Word might not give us the specifics. It's not going to show you how to tie a bolt or how to change a tire. It's not going to give us certain uh, details of life's issues. However, the Word of God even does something greater. It gives us principles and guidelines on how to live and navigate successfully life's challenges. So, why do we believe, why do I believe that the Word of God is sufficient? Why am I so passionate about this? Why do I believe that the Word of God is sufficient? Number one, and we shared this a bit last, last week, that I believe the Word of God is sufficient because of who authored it. The one who authored the Word of God gives it credence, makes it enough and competent to solve any challenge that is brought before it. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 tells us, who authored the word of God? It says, it says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. I like that simple word that all scripture is God breathed, but is also useful. You know, sometimes you might just have this holy mystic writing that is just transcended and up there, but it is not useful. No, no, no. The word of God is not only breathed by God, but it is also useful. In other words, it is practical. It is relevant for today's challenges. In fact, Paul, speaking to Timothy, describes the greatness of the one who authored this word this way. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 to 16. This is what Paul tells Timothy. He says, He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Paul is telling Timothy, listen, young man, as you stand on the word of God, understand that its strength, its sufficiency comes from one who is sovereign. The Bible says that he is blessed and sovereign. That word sovereign means he is supreme. There is nothing higher, no one greater, no one that is greater than him. And so Paul is telling Timothy, be confident in this word. Why? Because the one who authored it is supreme. I love Paul's words to the Colossian church. Paul says this to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. He says, we look at this son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in every created thing. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank upon rank and rank of angels. Everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was therefore before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. I want to repeat that. He says, Paul says this, he was there, who? God. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it together right up to this moment. My friend, God is supreme. He holds all things together, even in 2021. Praise the Lord. And the scripture continues and says, and when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From the beginning to the end, he is there. 
praise the Lord, towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Hallelujah. Without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people, and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies all because of his death and his blood that poured down from the cross. My friend, I want to tell you that when this incredible God inspires men to write his word for us as a man, you and I can trust it. You and I can be confident that the word of God is enough. It is sufficient. You and I can take it to the bank. We can rest knowing that when he sends his word, as Isaiah 55 says, that when he his word comes forth from his mouth. It's not going to return to him void. Friends, this is why I believe that the word of God is sufficient because its author is supreme. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So what, what, what is this word? Now that we know that the word of God is supreme, what is the word sufficient to do. Now that we know that the word of God is enough, it is competent, it is sufficient for all of life, what is it sufficient to do? I mean everything. But I want to just pick out four things quickly that we can just remind ourselves and encourage ourselves in. The first one is the word of God is sufficient to know who God is. The word of God alone is adequate in explaining to us the nature and character of God. If you want to know who God is, his character, how he has dealt and deals with people. Look no further. The word of God is enough. Listen, the word of God says that God is love. It tells us about his character. First John chapter 4, verse 8. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God does not have love. God is not with love, but God is love. The Bible tells us that God is holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The Bible tells us that God is just. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it says, he is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. The Bible tells us that he is merciful. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The Bible also tells us that our God is a father. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, And I will be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Through the word of God, we learn who God is. His dealings with individuals of all walks of life. Young people like David. We see him dealing with people like Jeremiah. We see him dealing with shepherds, craftsmen, military men, kings and the like. And by seeing how he deals with each group, we learn his nature. We understand his character. And consequently, we understand who he is and how we can relate with him. Friend, do you want to know who God is? Do you want to know the character of God? Do you want to know the nature of God? Look no further. Get into God's word. Fall in love with God's word. It is enough to help us know who God is. Secondly, the word of God is sufficient. To know the truth. In the world today, or in the world today, people define truth using different lenses. Okay? They say the definition of truth is according to one's perspective. Some people say that, you know, the way we see things is the basis of truth. In other words, if I woke up today and I was feeling lionish, I can say, today I am a lion. If I am a male, born a male, and, you know, along the way, during the week, I start feeling like I'm a female, according to my perspective, I can say, hey, now I am a woman. Please refer to me as a she. He is a she. That is the way you need to refer to me. And in, in some, 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 some places they're saying, listen, because of your own, your perspective, that is your truth. In other words, some of us that are 30 years old, we can begin to feel that, you know what, now I'm a senior citizen. Let me go to U a a a a NSSF and claim my pension. I want to see how that happens for you. The Bible also tells us, listen, that in John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus says that the word of God is 
truth. It's not just about our perspective, but it is truth. But yet the world is saying, as according to your perspective, the way you see things, that is your truth. There's another lens in the world where people say that, you know, according to the consensus, majority opinion wins determines what is true in that season and in that culture. Also, there are lenses of relativism, okay, and situational ethics. Your truth might not be my truth, okay? For me, I believe this and someone else might believe something else. All of us have truth. But also, there are people who believe in science as an approach to truth. In other words, science speaks to us and says truth has to be evidenced. It has to be in facts, But these facts, the challenge with science as a determinant of truth is that these facts can be biased. They also change. And furthermore, these truths or facts from science do not help us with challenges of human behavior and morality. But like I said, Jesus has declared in his word in John chapter 17, verse 17, that the word of God is truth. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Why? Because your word is truth. Also in John chapter 8 verse 32, Jesus said, then you will know the truth and that truth will set you free. In a world where you see there is so much relativism, where we cannot count on anything to be stable, everything is changing all the time. Friends, the word of God is our stability. Like Isaiah 33 says, that it is a sure foundation for our times. And because God's word is sufficient to know the truth, we can rely on it. Are you looking for answers today? Are you looking for something that you can base your life on that is not shifting like the sand, that is a rock that you can build your life on? Friends, let's look no further. Let's look to the word of God because the word of God is sure. The Word of God helps us answer life's great questions. I want to give you an example of some of life's great questions. Some of these questions are, what is life's meaning? What, is, what am I here for? Every day of our lives, many times we are wondering to ourselves, why am I here? Why do I exist? And the, the third thing that we want to see that the Word of God is sufficient for is the ability to answer life's toughest question. One of those questions is the meaning of life. Everyone wrestles with the age-old question, why am I here? Do I have a purpose? Or am I just feeling space and time? But the Word of God, friends, gives us insight into our purpose on earth and how to live meaningful lives. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 11 to 12. And the message, it says this, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. And he says, long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eyes on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose, he was working out in everything and everyone. Friends, the creator is the one who determines purpose for his creation and gives it a manual on how the purpose should be expressed. Our purpose, our, the meaning of life does not come from just looking within ourselves as some of the popular religions and self-help speakers are asserting. I'll give you an example. A television set does not determine by itself what its purpose is. That purpose is determined by its creator. A car cannot look internally and say, I am this. No, the purpose of a car is defined by its creator. So are you and I. The question of life's meaning comes or is answered through God's word. Our purpose comes from our creator who has not hidden himself. Listen to what Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and 14 says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen and answer. What is Jeremiah telling us? Jeremiah is telling us, friends, that God... God has a specific plan for your life and my life. And that plan is accessible by going into his word, by getting to know what he has called us to do. Finally, 
I want us to answer one of the greatest questions in life. And that is the word of God is sufficient to man's destiny, to know man's destiny, to understand that huge question about our destiny. Listen, while in high school, I remember being, uh, you know, as not saved. And so we had this young man in school who was uh, a Christian. And we always teased him and just teased him over and over again. Because when he would come to us and say, hey, you need Christ. When you die, where are you going to go? You know, what will happen? And we would tell him, ah, man, when we die, there's going to be nothing. So for us, we're going to be here and enjoy our lives. Now you, you're going to live holy lives, what? And be bored. And when you die, you will have missed. <laughs> and so one time we were playing with him and joking with him and, and really making his life miserable. And he stopped us and says, listen, we had just studied probability in class. And he said, hey, guys, I want you to listen. Let us say, let's say, okay, for just for the sake of argument's sake, let's say that if we all die, there is nothing. If we die and there's nothing, all of us have missed everything, okay? There's nothing for all of us. But then he says, however, imagine that if we died, there is actually a God in heaven. I tell you, all of us that were joking, we were all quiet. Because we realized that the probability was incredibly, we, we didn't want to play with our lives. That probability was huge, okay? Because if we died and we had not made a decision to know God, we would be going to hell. And so I want to tell you, my friends, that the question of our destiny is laid out clearly in God's word. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20 says this. Moses says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Moses doesn't end there. He even encourages us and says, please choose life. Okay, choose life. Forget this relativism mambo jumbo that says all roads lead to God. That is not true. The word of God is very clear about how to be saved. It's very clear about who can be saved. It is also very clear about who alone saves. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 tells us how we can be saved. It says it is by grace. You have been saved through faith that is not from your own selves. It's not by works. It is the gift of God. Not anyone's works so that anyone can boast. So friends, salvation is by grace through faith. We simply believe in him. Who can be saved? Acts chapter 2 verse 21 lays that out clearly. And it says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So who can be saved? Everyone, no matter your age, no matter your gender, no matter your social status, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The scriptures also are very clear about who saves. It's not an issue of gambling. It is very clear about who saves. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says salvation. <laughs> oh, glory to God. It says salvation is found in no one else except Oh, for there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. No one else. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse 6, this is, this is Jesus' own words. He says, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one, ladies and gentlemen, no one, the scripture says, comes to the Father except through me. Friends, the word of God is not mysterious. The word of God is clear. The word of God is sufficient. The word of God is clear on how we can be saved. The word of God is clear about our destiny, that we have two choices. We either choose life or choose death. And that choice, friends, happens today. I want to end with the words written in a book by Kevin DeYoung. He says this. He says, Scripture is clear enough to make us responsible for carrying out our present responsibilities to God. It takes away any excuses for disobedience. No one can say God has not revealed enough for us to be saved or to live life pleasing to him. Scripture makes us competent and equipped for good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. It says, we do not need to add to it to meet today's challenges or subtract from it to mesh with today's ideals. He says this, he says, the word of God is perfect, 
and complete, giving us all we need to know about Christ, salvation, and godliness. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you, as you have been listening to me, I know God is speaking to you. As we end today's message, have you been hearing God speaking to you? Listen to what God is saying in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. That when His word comes forth, when His word comes to you, this is what the Bible says. So, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Do not harden your heart. Have you been listening to God speaking to you, even as I was sharing about the sufficiency of God's word? Well, hardening your heart could be that you need to begin to believe God's Word. Get into God's Word. Trust the Word of God concerning life's issues, concerning life's challenges, whatever is being thrown at you in life, whether at work, whether in your relationships, let the Word of God be the standard on which you rise and the standard on which you live your life. Let the Word of God be the standard that, that we use to portray our life, to walk in our lives today. I want to encourage you, friends, if you are there and you have been hearing my voice and you have never given your life to Christ, I know God is speaking to you. I know He's saying something to you. And I want to invite you to receive Him as Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to ask Him to come into your life, to surrender your life, to choose life and not death. If that is you and you are willing to choose life, I want you to repeat this simple prayer with me. All you need to do is right where you're seated, to just close your eyes and surrender your heart to God and just say, Dear God, I thank you for today's message. I thank you for speaking to me. I thank you that you are calling me, that you are asking for my life, that I will choose life. Lord, today I choose life. I choose you. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of how I've lived my life without your guidance. And from today, I make a conscious decision to follow you to have you as Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, if you have said that prayer, wherever you are, online, on TV, I want to ask you, would you just send us a message? There are numbers at the bottom of your screen. Please text us. We want to know the decision that you have made. We want to call you and pray with you. If you're online, you can just punch in. Just send us a message online. Let us know that you have chosen life. We'll be happy to pray with you and call you. May God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing week. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken, for preaching God's Word and reminding us that it's sufficient for everything in life. Man, I love this series, The Supremacy of God's Word. Well, it's time for us to give. Get your tithes, get your offerings ready. I want to read a scripture as we prepare to give. And that is from Proverbs chapter 11, verses 23 to 25. Here's what it says. The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Friends, there's a blessing in being generous because not only does it change lives, but here the Bible says we get refreshed when we are generous. So as we give, the giving instructions are going to come up on the screen, but also today we want you to know a very important thing that's happening here at Watoto. So there's a very important announcement from the leadership right after the giving instructions. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code is 148775. That is 148775. And for Airtel, you dial star 185 star 4 star 9 hash. And the business number is 700,000. That is 7 
followed by five zeros. For more giving options, check out our website, watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code, which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid and finally fill in your MTN mobile money pin. Thank you for your generosity. Well, I hope you're having a great day today. You know, I'm so excited about one thing. The team of men and women that I get to lead as, as a pastor, I've gathered around me some of the most amazing young people. And uh, one of those is Ken and his wife, Trish, who I just, they're such special people to me. I love the way they have been leading at Buayo Guerrero for the last number of years. I love the way Ken preaches. He has a unique style. He makes you laugh. And I love the little jog that he does. It's, it's a, they've done such a great job. And they're feeling very strongly that it's time for them to step away from pastoral ministry. And so we're just, I, I don't like it, but you know what? God does things in amazing ways. And Ken and Trish, I, I love you so much. I'm so proud of the work that you have done at Buyo Guerrero. I love you. I know that the future is bright for you. I know that God has something special for you. Um, you are a son and a daughter to me and Marilyn, and we love you so much. May the very best that God has for you be ahead of you in every way. Thank you. Thank you for your faithful, loyal, dedicated service. We are so, so proud of you. And of course, that leaves a, a gap. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited that we have lots of young people that are coming up through the ranks and are ready to serve. And one of those is Joe and Jackie. Joe and Jackie have been pioneers at Watoto Church, went to, to Gulu and established Gulu, did an awesome job. And then we sent them from the frying pan into the fire. They went off to Juba and they did an amazing work and in real difficult times. And uh, Joe and Jackie, uh, Marilyn and I love you. We're proud of you too. And we're so thankful that you can step into the place that Ken and Trisha have been filling for those for these past years. And that's what I want to let you know, that Joe and Jackie will be giving oversight, pastoral oversight uh, under Pastor Julius and Pastor Eddie uh, to Buyo Guerrero. And uh, we just want to pray for them. So those of you that are from Buyo Guerrero, get behind them, support them, encourage them, uh, serve them, and just help their days to be sweeter because you're a part of the team that they're a part of. Can we pray together for these wonderful couples? Father, I thank you so much for Ken and for Trish and the way that they have served you out of great character, out of uh, commitment and loyalty and dedication. Thank you for the thousands of lives that have been changed because of their faithfulness. Now bless them as they step into this next phase of their lives. And, and we pray that you would just bless their two daughters and just encourage them and strengthen them. We thank you for that. And we thank you for Joe and Jackie as they step into the responsibility at Buyo Guerrero. Bless them, use them, encourage them, empower them, equip them, and may the team gather around them and may we see great things happen in Buyo Guerrero. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you enjoy the service today. Hello, my name is Gillian. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a flight attendant. I love skipping rocks with my family. I love Watoto because we care for the community. Thank you for loving me.
rising to the setting sun I will praise you for the battle's won You are the one that goes before me I am covered by your hand I've never seen the righteous forsaken Never seen the children beg for bread You are the God that never leaves me You provide
for joining us today. I believe that you were blessed. But if you have enjoyed uh, the new sermon series, The Supremacy of God's Word, you can get this and so much more on our website, which is watotochurch.com. But if you'd like to pray with someone or receive some counseling, do call the number on your screen uh, right now, or you can write to connect at watotochurch.com. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. That is YouTube, that is Facebook, Twitter or Twitter, as other people like to say, Instagram. Alternatively, you can also tune into Power 104.1 FM, the station that is all about love for uplifting programming for you and your family. So I would like you to enjoy your weekend, but also see you next week. Remember to read the Bible.